Hi folks, Mr. Refer here with you. We, uh, I'm going to do a quick video because of a common mistake that a lot of students new to economics make and that is to confuse uh, changes in demand and supply with changes in quantity demanded and quantity supplied students, and particularly students uh, whose primary language is not English, may at first glance gloss over the changes between me saying those things. But there is, a, although a subtle difference in English, there is a fundamental difference in economics. And this video is about the difference between those two things, and you have to know it. So. first thing we're going to do is uh, plot a demand curve based on a simple demand schedule here. I've got uh, price of chocolate bars and then quantity demanded of chocolate bars. Go ahead and have that graph come up for you very quickly. I'm just plotting points now and this should be review for you. Here's my downward sloping demand curve based on this demand schedule of chocolate bars. Now, I want you to note that if I start off with a price of 5, I see that the number of chocolate bars demanded here is 2. If I were to lower the price to 4, from 5 to 4, the quantity demanded of chocolate bars increases from 2 to 4. And if I lower the price even further to 3, the quantity demanded of chocolate bars increases from 4 to 6. So the rule here is that when we have one existing demand curve or supply curve, a change in price always causes a change in quantity demanded, or if this were a supply curve, a change in quantity supplied. Movement along the curve means a change in quantity demanded, or quantity supplied. Now let's take a look at cases where we would have a change in demand. Note the difference. That's not a change in the quantity demanded, but rather a change in demand. When we have a change in demand, it means that one of the non-priced determinants of demand, like the number of substitutes or population, has changed. And so it fundamentally changes the demand curve. In fact, it causes a situation where we have to create a new demand curve. Let's take, for example, this situation. This is my initial price of chocolate that you saw from the previous screen, and this is the initial quantity of chocolate. Now let's just assume here that I increase people's incomes in, the, in, in whatever local community here is. And what that means then is that the same price of chocolate bars as I had initially, people are going to be willing and able to purchase more. So uh, as a result of increasing people's income at a price of five, instead of wanting two, now they want four chocolate bars. At a price of four, instead of wanting four chocolate bars, they want six and so forth. Well, what does that look like when we construct a new demand curve? Let's take a look. Here's our initial demand curve. And then here is our newly constructed demand curve after the change in income. You see what's happened here is the change in income has caused us to completely change the demand curve. And we call that a change in demand or a shift in demand. So a change in one of the non-price determinants always causes a change in demand. Likewise, change in one of the non-price determinants of supply always causes a change in supply. So you got to know the lingo. When you write change in quantity demanded, make sure you're referring to the result of a price change. And when you write change or shift in demand, make sure you're referring to the result of a change in a non-price determinant. Now this video was about demand, but supply works exactly the same way. So hopefully now you're comfortable with the difference between change in supply and demand versus the change in quantity supplied or quantity demanded. I'll see you soon.